All right, you guys, we got another review, another fig review uh, that I want to do for you all this year because this is a fig that has become um, one of my favorites, actually. It's become one of my favorite honey figs. It's called White Marseille, and uh, it's a classic, guys. It's all over the place as well. It's really easy to find. Um, it's extremely popular in the United States. A ton of nurseries carry it, so you can find it very affordably. Um, it has a lot of characteristics that are extremely desirable, uh, like hardiness, it's early, it's rain resistant, it's split resistant, um, it produces a good quality fig. Uh, it's got a lot of good characteristics. Unfortunately, it gets a bad rap, and we'll talk about why that is in a minute. Um, I think largely because it just doesn't have a big name to it, so no one really gives it a whole lot of attention. Um, it is also extremely popular in Europe. Um, you can find this fig all over the world, to be honest with you. And because you can find it all over the world, all over the U.S., it has a lot of names for it. It goes by a bunch of different names. Um, it's very easy to distinguish, though, just by looking at the interior. You'll, you can tell by the seeds, the pulp color, um, the colors of the actual fig, the shape. Uh, if you get all that right, it's really easy to identify. Also, the leaves are kind of similar-ish in a way to a hardy Chicago. They're very um, sandpapery. They give you that, that feeling like they're quite hardy, uh, like they can really withstand something, that they're sort of resilient. They have a similar shape as well to a hardy Chicago type leaf. Um, obviously a bit different, but um, really an easy fig to identify. And uh, I think because it's, it's such a widely grown fig, there's probably a strain of this that's maybe a little bit better than others. And some of them may taste slightly different than others and may perform slightly different than others. Kind of like the hardy Chicago types and the Celeste types and, and all the different uh, families of figs that are quite popular uh, throughout the world. You'll just end up having many names and slight variations of the same fig. Uh, so white Marseille is a honey fig. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this open. There's not really a whole lot to say about it. I think that I haven't already said. Um, it has a nice, really, it has a furry skin to it, which I think a lot of people don't necessarily like. So if you just peel your figs, it's not gonna really matter. Um, also, the skin can be a little bit bitter, which people also don't like. But here is the uh, interior. Whoops, we lost a half. But it's really easy to, to really tell with this fig, to identify this fig, because the pulp is almost white. There is some yellow notes. Uh, it's a little bit amber in there. And then the seeds are brown. And the seeds are always quite visible in this one because it contrasts so well against the white pulp. And uh, it's just very easy to identify that way, I find. Uh, also has uh, sugar spots. The more ripe it gets, the more sugar spots it'll be, the uglier it'll be, as most honey figs will do in, um, in humid places. You won't get those sugar spots in, in less humid places. I find this fig is not a bad commercial variety actually it does hold up pretty well uh, it has a good structure to it the skin is rather um, thick in a way you can peel it um, as I am right now and it wouldn't be the worst idea to peel it I think um, if you're not a fan of the skin like I said the the stem has got some good um, length to it so it's easy to harvest um, I don't know. I think it's a decent variety, believe it or not. But just overall, I think it's pretty darn up there. And people just, like I said, they don't give it enough credit. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the flavor. They're just not a huge fan of this kind of fig, you know. Like myself, I really like figs that taste really strongly of berries. Not so much the honey types, which is what this is, or figs that taste like melons. I think it's very sweet. I think it's very good. 
It tastes a lot like um, brown sugar, a little bit of melons in there, uh, honey, of course. And a little bit of figginess. There's not a whole lot of bitterness, which usually there is some bitterness on the skin. So if you're not a fan of that, uh, again, you could peel it or just not eat the skin or uh, just not grow this variety, you know? Um, I think if it is a little bit bitter, which is why I'm sort of really starting to like this variety more and more, uh, the more bitterness it has on the skin or that slight bitterness taste, I should say, the more complex I think this fig, this variety becomes. Um, it's not just straight sugar. Uh, the sugar is really well balanced with uh, a little bit of bitterness and it really cuts through that, that sweetness. And actually I think it's a really highly, uh, it's a really high tasting fig for that reason. So that's White Marseille here guys. Um, my fig this year, Put out a ton of growth and a lot of shoots from the base and therefore it's really not all that productive uh, this year but it will be in the future when we correct the form we open the center of this um, it will put out a lot more fruit a fruit on every node um, i think even thomas jefferson was one that uh, really was a fan of this fig and brought it to the united states and grew this at monticello they still sell this at monticello to this day um, the question is whether or not that is the same exact variety that Thomas Jefferson brought from France. I don't know. But, uh, you know, this one has a lot of history. A lot of people like this. It's been around for a long time. I don't think you can really go wrong with it, honestly. You can grow it anywhere. Um, it is a hardy fig, as I mentioned, and uh, it also handles the humidity well. So, um, yeah. I think there's probably better options maybe in a warmer place, but overall, it's a good choice. So that's White Marseille. Hope to see you guys soon. Hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Take care.